For quite some time, the Live Golf Invitational Series has been a huge talking point in golf, with one of the main topics of discussion being the amount of money being tossed around inside the competition. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the prize money being offered to players to join the tournament. So let's get into it. First off, let's take a look at Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson's pay. When it comes to the Live Golf Tournament, the phrase, money makes the world go round, really seems to apply. In terms of just prize money, golfers will compete for $225 million across eight events, with seven games offered offering a $25 million purse and a $50 million finale at Miami's Trump National Doral. Also, this doesn't include appearance fees or money used to entice players to leave the PGA and DP World Tours and join the Saudi-backed Live Golf Series. According to various sources, Mickelson was promised $200 million to play in the Live Series, with Lefty saying that he'll play eight events this year and ten next. The alleged salary is more than twice what Mickelson earned over his 30-year PGA Tour career, with the 51-year-old earning around $95 million during the that time. Johnson's one of the Live Golf Invitational London stars, having been promised a staggering $125 million. This may rise to approximately $150 million if the American plays with Mickelson in the first tournament in Hertfordshire. DJ earned approximately $75 million in career earnings on the PGA Tour, winning 24 PGA Tour championships, including two majors and six World Golf Championships. So yeah, you can see that the money Live is offering is simply staggering. Next, what about the others? The Telegraph claimed in February, that Ian Poulter had been offered between 20 and $30 million to join the Live Series. Along with Poulter, fellow countryman Lee Westwood commented at the 2021 PGA Championship that it wasn't surprising, since if he'd been offered 50 million pounds at the age of 48, he would have taken the same chance. It's unclear how much Westwood has been promised when appearing at the Centurion Club, but if his comment is any hint, it's still a hefty sum. Although he wasn't in the field for the inaugural event at the Centurion Club, Deschambeau has become the next major player to jump ship in the Live Golf Series appearing at the Pumpkin Ridge Golf Club in Portland, Oregon. Bryson DeChambeau has been related to a lot of wealthy people. Earlier in 2022, the American was allegedly promised $135 million, with the figure eventually climbing to more than $240 million. According to insiders, Bryson will now receive a guaranteed $100 million to join Live Golf. James Piot, who is only 23 years old, has his entire career ahead of him. According to the Detroit Free Press, the 2021 U.S. Amateur Champion has paid a rumored $1 million to compete at the Centurion club. When he accepted the offer, Piot expressed his excitement at the prospect of traveling and seeing the world of golf. According to reports, Pat Perez has signed with the Live Golf Series for $10 million, which, while significantly less than some of the other players in the series, is still a sizable sum for a player who hasn't won since the 2017 CIMB Classic and is on the verge of becoming eligible for the PGA Tour Champion circuit in just four years. Perez's announcement was a little strange, with the American's wife Ashley breaking the news via an Instagram story, along with the appearance costs. There's also the issue of prize money, $225 million spread between eight tournaments. The first seven regular team events had a total prize pool of $25 million. A total of $20 million will be paid in individual prize money in a stroke play tournament with the three top teams receiving $5 million each. Following the first seven events, an individual champion will be crowned with $30 million on offer for the season's top three people. The winner will get $18 million, the second place player $8 million, and the third place player $4 million. This is only available to competitors who have competed in at least four events. Finally, what about the money source? The breakaway golfers gathered outside London this week are clearly not worrying about where this money comes from as they choose what is best for themselves and their families, providing balance, chasing the flexibility to play anywhere they choose, and getting financial security. This should be said and repeated. The money these golfers are promised before they even tee off in Liv's debut tournament on Thursday, the money they'll chase in prizes throughout the duration of the series, it's blood money. The Saudi government's investment arm supply at all. The Saudi government, a problematic regime that murdered Washington Post writer Jamal Khashoggi, continues to wreak devastation on innocent civilians in Yemen and desperately wants to utilize international law for sports to cover it all up. It's possible to feel that the compensation system for professional golfers has to change and that a rival group's the best way to push for change while yet acknowledging that there are improper ways to go about it. We've been urged to follow the money since the days of Woodward and Bernstein. The players don't appear to be interested. Forget about Mickelson and Johnson. Live biggest stars, Take Na, a 38-year-old five-time PGA Tour champion best known for his on-course eccentricities, very sluggish play that irritates, a humorous tendency to stroll in his putts. Does Na ever wonder, after signing up with Liv for an unknown guaranteed payment and then competing in eight 54-hole events with a total prize pool of $255 million, if he's really worth that much? Probably not. Go a little farther down the rabbit hole. It might get scary. The Liv series has no foreign broadcast deal to fill the coffers. It can't generate $250 
$25 million in revenue from ticket sales for eight events. Sponsors are dumping players who sign up. RBC, for example, cut ties with Johnson & McDowell. The money's all coming from the Public Investment Fund, which styles itself as a Saudi sovereign wealth fund. Sovereign, you say? Its chairman is none other than Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who the CIA believes ordered Khashoggi's murder. And here's some other related news. First off, Henrik Stenson switched to live golf. The 46-year-old Swede was fired by Ryder Cup Europe and afterward issued a statement confirming his participation in the controversial Saudi-backed breakaway tournament. He stated that while he disagreed with the decision to remove him as captain, he does accept that decision for the time being. Stenson, the 2016 Open champion, was named captain in March. He shared that the reason for being fired was due to the Ryder Cup not liking his decision to join the Live tournament. He isn't the first player to go through this, however. Live Golf announced Stenson's addition to the circuit and American combo Jason Cockrack and Charles Howell III in a new statement. The Live Golf Invitational Bedminster, held at Trump National Golf Club in New Jersey from July 29 to 31, will be their debut participation in the series. Ryder Cup, on the other hand, said that their decision was based on personal reasons, which sounds a lot like just not wanting Stenson to play in the Live. This is their loss, really, because with his individual championships and international experience, Stenson's definitely a catch to have. Next, Charles Barkley talked about his Live Golf offer. Charles Barkley, a former basketball star, has made it clear what he would do if offered the numbers allegedly being offered to golfers recently. Greg Norman appears to have taken notice. In an interview with the New York Post, Barkley, the NBA Hall of Famer, NBA pundit, and much maligned golfer, stated that he had dinner with Norman to negotiate a broadcasting job with Norman's controversial Saudi-backed Live Golf Invitational Series. While Barkley stated that he and Norman merely chatted, he did agree to play in the Live's Next Events Pro-Am, which will be held next week at Trump National Golf Club Bedminster in New Jersey. According to the Post, Barkley's under contract with Turner Sports for three years and $30 million, but he informed the outlet that he might work for Liv. As far as the blood money was concerned, he wasn't actively bothered by it, since it was hard to make sure that you weren't getting money from a bad source in the sports world. Finally, Dave Faherty left NBC for Liv Golf. Golf analyst David Faherty has left NBC and is scheduled to join the Liv Golf Tour broadcasts. According to reports, Faherty will be an analyst for the 8-10 to 10 Liv Golf tournaments each year. Liv Golf had previously hired Arlo White, a veteran NBC soccer play-by-play -play announcer as its presenter. Faraday, 63, is known for his irreverence, which he initially demonstrated on CBS more than two decades ago before transferring to NBC and the Golf Channel for the last seven years. The Northern Ireland native was featured on NBC's coverage of the British Open. The network refused to comment on this change, and Faraday did not respond to the questions right away either. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of the pay being offered to some athletes? Should they be paid this much? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We will see you in the next one.